Welcome back to the Sermon Notes Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Strother, and with me today, once again, is my good friend, Brian Ball. This season, we continue to walk through the entire Bible chronologically across all of our Brentwood Baptist campuses. And this week, we are looking at the book of Ezekiel. And so a couple of caveats. One is that I know I am hearing it from you guys on a consistent basis. Oh, man, the prophets, like, will we ever get to the New Testament? We will. We will. We're getting there. We're about a month away. And, and you're you're walking the journey. This right. is, imagine what Israel felt like. Right. Right? This Messiah had been promised. This new David was coming. Uh, but they're having to walk through exile. They're having to walk through uh, all of this. And then even on the other side of what we have recorded, there's 400 years of prophetic silence. Right. And so it took a minute. And so just know, we're going to get there, we promise, in the last quarter. But you should feel that way, and that's good. We should long for the Messiah. And so even as we're walking through these books, you know, we're going to see how that crescendo continues to build. Right, that's the desired effect exactly. of reading through the prophets. Good phrase. Right, is, is, to, is to make you long for Jesus. Yeah. And so if you're reading it and you're longing for Jesus, right, that's, 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 that's the object. That's, that's what it. we're doing. So. so today we're going to try to tackle Ezekiel. <laughs> Uh, which when you're starting to slide into like heavy prophetic books, Ezekiel yeah. is one of those. Yes. Uh, if you read Ezekiel carefully, a lot of people, a lot of, even my kids were like, oh, that stuff I've heard, it's in Revelation. Right. Right. <laughs> right? Because Revelation, again, pulls forward from yeah. a lot of these prophetic books. Yeah. Uh, and so, Brian, I know I, I, we have kind of this odd love affair with prophetic books uh, because we taught through at the Station Hill campus several years ago, we decided to do a year on prophecy. Yes. So you had a clever title for it. It was we, really fun. Fun. Zeke, Dan, and the Rev, where we did Ezekiel, Daniel, and Revelation. <laughs> yeah. And that that was among the more difficult. It, 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 teaching Ezekiel specifically, I think I taught 13 through the through 48, that was among the most difficult teaching I've ever done. Yeah. And, and it, I actually, I couldn't think of anything to say on the Judgment of the Nations, which we'll get to. And so I just read it. I thought everybody was going to leave, which, which again, <laughs> you that's thought the, I was going to walk out of the room. You, you were squirming. It you was, were squirming. It's just heavy. It went uncomfortable. Yeah. The whole it thing was. is so. And, but again, that's the desired effect. I was going to say, there's your phrase, you. desired effect. And so that's what these things are supposed to do when we read because we're going to read the judgment of, of yeah. Israel and Judah. We're going to read yep. the judgment of the nations, and it go it takes everybody. Yep. And so whatever your favorite vice is, you're going to get dinged. That's right. Between that's 10, right. And if you relish the judgment of the nations, then you might consider a psychological. Evaluation. Yes, you, you probably uh, you, need sh- to... you shouldn't you shouldn't feel good about right. this section of scripture, but right. but again, it had it serves its desired effect. It and does. So we're we're gonna walk through this a little bit. So uh, remember, I love this phrase that you use, Brian. Prophets are given by God the ability to see through things, yep. such as time, space, and pretense. Yes. I love I love especially the pretense yeah. one. Well, he does. He you he cuts through what you like to think you are, mm-hmm. and tells you who you really are. Yeah, and that's what the prophets do. We, that's we scripture, put a, right? It's exactly right because uh, it's pre- the author of Hebrews says it's like a sword, right? right? Double edged sword. Because we're very pretentious. Even <laughs> yes. even those of us, right? We're yeah. even pretentious <laughs> in our humility. Yeah, which is even sadder. <laughs> yeah, that's right. right. That's so, right. So scripture cuts, cuts away through. those layers. That's exactly right. And this is who we really are. Exposes our heart. And so this is what who God and it, right. That's what we always talk about. Start with who God is. Yeah, because. He'll, he'll tell yeah. you who you really are. Which is actually a great lead into Ezekiel it because is. that's going to be kind of the first thing that, that God gives him. So again, the setup is uh, the, the name Ezekiel literally means strengthened by God. Right. He was going to need God's strength <laughs> to was. do some of the things that God's going to call him to preach and to do. Yes. We'll talk about his sign acts yes. in a moment as uh, well. Uh, but, you know, God's people are in exile. Yep. And and we know that Ezekiel came from a priestly line. Right. And so there's a little setup. You need a little Bible history to understand this. It says on his 30th birthday, yeah. he sits down by one one of these canals right. in Babylon. And if you were a priest, you would be installed on your 30th birthday. Right. So the time he was going to be installed, he's in a foreign land going, what? Well, this isn't what my life is supposed to be. Right. Right. And a lot of us have woken up at some point in our life going, yep. this isn't this isn't the life I thought I was going to have. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the one God gave him. Mm-hmm. And so we see powerful works in and through him, yeah. right, to show God's people. Well, God gives him a calling. He does. So he, he thought he was going to be a priest. Right. But God, in essence, says, well, I've, you're going to be a prophet. prophet. Yep. And for the next 25 years, right, your life and your words uh, are going to belong to me. But there's something that he needs to see first. Right. He and needs to glimpse the glory of God right. in it's, a powerful, powerful way. Right. We get these ma- this magnificent vision, right, yep. the opening of Ezekiel, because he needs to understand understand God in that depth and in that totality to sustain him. And we talk about ministry, and oftentimes you have to know what your call is. 
Mm-hmm. Because if you don't know what your call is, it is too hard to do. That's you right. will give up at some point yeah. if you don't can't walk back to what did the Lord call me mm-hmm. to do? Yeah, right. What did the Lord? And call if me you to don't do? believe that God is on the throne, right? right? If you yeah, if yeah, you yeah, if you, you can't it. understand how great God is, yep. and even if nobody else listens to me, yep. to believe that I'm being faithful to Him, and, right. and so He's sitting there, and God, you know, unveils this vision. It's in the sky, right? And, and we'll unpack this, you know, uh, in a sermon. But th- this idea that you know God is is bigger than you can imagine and, and it stretches across the expanse of the heavens yeah. that God is sovereign he's glorious and guess what he's also in Babylon that's right even even where you think he can't be yeah in a God be? forsaken place right. is the way we would put that right he sees God even there right and that's mag again magnificent to our lives because we think we're in places where God can't be or God can't go. And anytime you say the words God and can't consecutively, you're probably not doing good theology. That's a great point. Right? And so God is everywhere, mm-hmm. and God can. Yeah. God can. And and we have to remember that, and he will operate within his character. That's right. And that's what we see. Ezekiel is given this magnificent understanding and vision mm-hmm. of the glory of God, that's the it. magnificence that's it. of God. And the word glory in Hebrew is not just shiny things. Right. It is that too. Right. But it also is the word kabod, which means weight. weight. Yeah. So, so there is a weight to God's glory. There is a significance, a presence, a, a heaviness, a, a, an indwelling probably yes. is the best mm. way to put it that fills all things and it fills the sky right. and it's you know again city of babylon magnificent city oh yeah i showed an image of it a couple of weeks ago yeah. in my, my sermon you know these canals the hanging gardens of babylon right. the seven wonders of the world right. you know but yet god is re- depicted right he, this vision ezekiel god's over it all right and and that's critical to us and when we think about glory and weight we see when man tries to take on glory yeah. we see that in our celebrities oh, we so see good. that in our athletes yep. and that weight crushes them that's right we and we see it over what's, yeah. what's amazing to me is we see it over and over and over again and we still don't think it's yeah. going to happen next yeah. time yeah we do so i remind people all the time right man was not designed for glory amen and if you receive the praises of people and you really begin to think you're all that in a bag of chips yep. as we used to say <laughs> yeah. right then it goes to your head and it warps your mind, yep. it warps your soul, yep. and we wonder why celebrities live eccentrically. We wonder why they can, you know, earn tens of millions of dollars and go broke. We yep. wonder why, you know, that they they how would a person that's successful, you know, have all these addictions? Why? Because they can't handle glory. Right. So if people give you praise. You better give it to your creator. That's exactly. You better right. reflect it to him because over time it'll warp you. And it happens to even pastors. It happens to anyone, right? They see we they should see the good works of your life and give thanks to your father who is in heaven. Yeah. Right? That's the object of us is to reflect God's glory, mm-hmm. not take it on ourselves. Yeah. And so as we continue to work in his strength, in mm-hmm. his ways, in in obedience, right? The world we really don't like. But one of the things about Zeke, Zeke was obedient. He was. Right? He was obedient, even in some things yeah. that well, God tells him his call is going to be hard, right? right? He's going to have a difficult ministry. He's going to have a difficult message, and it's only going to be through divine means, right? Right, that he he can operate because right. there, there's no way anybody carries out this this kind of ministry on their own, right? Uh, I mean, he's going to be asked to, to do some pretty crazy things. So let's talk about that for a minute because this is where you know you guys stop me out in public <laughs> or in the halls of the church, and I love that. But yes. you have these questions. Yeah. You're like, so why is Ezekiel building a little city in miniature and laying on his side? <laughs> side yeah. Well. He is living out a picture of Jerusalem, right? right. He, he's a lived out word picture. Right. So this is kind of like street theater. Right. And so what God's doing is, is not only is the message important, but the sign act is an attempt to get the attention of God's people. And again, it's another example of God's mercy and his grace. That's right. That he's trying to do everything he can in their culture to grab the attention of their people. Right. It's not, it's the means in addition to the ends. That's right. right? And that's critically important that we, that we recognize that. And again, and some of it's artistry, as we yeah. talked about the Lamentations last yeah. week, the, the, the acrostic, there's artistry that God uses to get our mm-hmm. attention in addition to... Yeah. Just the well, just like we or, consider theater a part of the arts, right, these sign acts are or very much artistic. you know a one man you know theater. It's yeah. a one man play. It's a yeah. one man show. It's demonstrating things. And I, I don't know, Brian, but if God called me to eat my food cooked over dung, dung poop, I, I, that's a hard calling. <laughs> that would be. Uh, but, but what he's saying is pretty simple. Like 
you're put- putrid. Everything stinks. Right. You know, and, and so uh, that, you know, but, but it, it definitely will get your attention. Well, and to be honest, you know? I would still cook my pop tarts in the wrapping. <laughs> I would not un- unwrap my pop tarts before I ate them. I, that, just not overdone. Yeah. Nope. Uh, nope. It's, it's gonna... a little, it's a little gross, yep. but there's all yep. kinds of things that, that Ezekiel is, is called to do. Yeah. Um, and, and what this speaks to is, is God's faithfulness it is. because the whole thesis of this, you can find in, in chapter six, verse 10, where it says, and they will know that I am the Lord. Right. Through all of the seemingly crazy stuff to us, mm-hmm. probably seemingly crazy stuff to Ezekiel. Yeah. Right? It, it, so it's not that he's some kind of super holy guy. He's mm-hmm. Zeke. Right. And that, that's why I use kind of casual names because these are ordinary men with an extraordinary God. That's it. Just, just like us. Yeah. That's why we did Zeke, Dan, and the Rev. These are, mm-hmm. these are not you know, super people. These are people God uses in significant ways, mm-hmm. just like he uses each of us in a significant yeah. way. And yep. so that's what's so incredible. And it's all done to know that God is, is that Jesus is Lord, yep. to know that God is over and sovereign over all these mm-hmm. things and wants your attention. Yeah. And so I think that's an, it's spectacular. Yeah. We take and like science. all the prophets, there's heavy stuff in here about judgment, yes. right? Their idolatry stinks. Yes. Right. Their immorality <laughs> yeah. is, you know, yeah. smells bad to God yes. uh, and the whole city smells. Right. right. Uh, but, but there's these incredible pictures of hope. Right. So like in chapters eight through 11, we see the temple vision. Right. And so this kind of angelic host acts as tour guide and gives Ezekiel of a vision of a temple that's even bigger and better than the one that's lost. Again, remember losing the temple to them was losing their religious identity. It was, right. it was losing that, that meeting place they had between them and God. And now all of a sudden Ezekiel sees a temple that's even better than Solomon. That's exactly right, and, and it's a beautiful vision, and and he and he shows that there will be a restoration, yeah. and that's something we lose. Um, I don't again back to our kind of cultural narratives of modernity and, and post modernity, we will lose cultural narratives of redemption and restoration. Yeah, right. Those are not narratives we talked about last week. Not weeping, redemption and restoration are also not narratives. Mm. Right? There's there's kind of a fixed judgment on things, and that's not what God says. God says, "Look, mm-hmm. I know this went away, but there yep. is even more for you." Yeah. Right? There, it's not just restoration back to where you were. That's good. It's restoration to abundance. Mm-hmm. Right? We will have life and life abundant. Yeah, which is all a foreshadowing of of His kingdom. You know, that we we are part of that kingdom that we we call heaven. Right? Yep. The ultimately the, the kingdom of God. Yep. So, awesome. so, so chapter 11 kind of serves as this turning point, uh, because again, we get a message very congruent to Jeremiah's that right. God one day is going to give his people a heart of flesh right? And, and that promise is made for the remnant, for those who are going to continue to be faithful. Uh, and so we see kind of this pivot after the, the this back to the judgment of Israel, yep. uh, that the failures of Judah will take down, uh, you know, any people and in our lives, they'll take down us as individuals That's as exactly well. exactly right. Well, and they reject the divine revelation, mm-hmm. right? Ignoring true prophets, accepting false prophets and their idolatry, and Judah, Judah failed to fulfill its purpose of fruitfulness for God. Yeah. Right. And that's just tragic to see that. Yeah. And it has a long history of unfaithfulness. And that goes back to God kept trying to get their attention. Yeah. But they continued to be unfaithful. So Judah looked for security and political alliances rather than God's sustenance. And we've yep. seen that several times yeah. going through this, right? Going through this chronologically. Yeah, we try to rely on us instead of just saying, all right, God, I'll obey your ways. Right. Well, us and the things around us. Right. Right. I don't need God. I need that. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what whatever mm-hmm. that is. And I can assure you, you need God vastly more than you need That's any right. that. Yeah. And, and, and so Ezekiel rolls out all these word pictures, right? right? You're, you're a useless stick, <laughs> Israel, <laughs> right? Uh, you're, you're, a, 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 you know, you're a cheater. You right. know, again, you're a, a rebellious wife. Uh, you're like a couple of prostitutes. Right. I mean, you know, there's all yep. of these word pictures. Again, just trying to get, you know, visually God's people to understand that they are under judgment. Uh, but they're not the only ones under judgment, no, are they? But I love that they st- it starts with Israel and Judah. Yeah. It starts with my God's people. people. Right. Shockingly enough, it starts with us. When we look at most of the problems in our world, yeah. it's because of the church. Because of the we church are failing to do what God, God has called us, us to do. do. That's exactly right. Yeah. And so if we do Lost what people we do, can only act like lost, lost people. people. And it's shocking. And so they mm-hmm. do lost things. Yeah. We're supposed to be different. Yeah. And I believe that's why God starts with the judgment of his people. Mm-hmm. But then he yeah. says, now look, that doesn't mean all of these other people are not under judgment too. And, he, right. and he goes in a pattern, a geographical pattern, and 
yeah. nation by nation. Because is, God is just. He is. And so he, he, he's going to be just with his people, but he's also going to be just, and he's going to bring his justice to the other people groups of the world. Right. Well, as he talked about that in Jeremiah with what he was going to do to Babylon, mm-hmm. right? Don't, That's right. Don't you, don't you worry about me using the instrument of judgment on yeah. you. They've, they've got their judgment yeah, coming. Yeah, their, their day's coming. Right. And and that's what this is. This is, and it's so uncomfortable because it, it hits just about every cultural idol we have. Good. Yeah. Not those nations. It hits every cultural item we have so right now. Point. And so it is a brutal reading yeah. from 25 to 30. Yeah, it's kind of like a systematic takedown. Uh, I mean, it's like a prize boxer, right. right? And it's just like body blow after body blow. But done surgically, mm-hmm. right? It's body blow after body done exactly at the right point, exactly mm-hmm. at the right. And that's it, when you watch the, or those athletes that know exactly mm-hmm. what Yeah, to immorality, do. idolatry, materialism, yep. pride. pride. And so this leads to one of the interesting little rabbit trails that that's in here for us. You know, the Bible doesn't give us a whole lot about Satan. Right. But there's this fascinating passage in chapter 28 about the king of Tyre. And what's clear is, is there there was a king of Tyre, yep. right? And he was prideful and he was evil. Yep. But clearly the way that God allows Ezekiel to see through time and space speaks to someone more than just an earthly ruler. It's also obviously speaking about the pride of, of Satan. Right. And that and that's what Satan's downfall is. In the end, that's right? right. This is pride. That's what almost all of our pride, right, is that roots down to yep. so much of our sin is our pride. And even even there's kind of an inverse to pride that's still pride, right, where you do humble humble, humble brag, right? <laughs> and, sure, and that's still a prideful thing, yes. and that's so consuming yeah. Yeah. to believe that we're we're the center of things. Yeah. I love your right our, our confession. Mm-hmm. Turn to your neighbor. Yeah, right. There's, there's a God. God. And you're, you're not, not him, him. right? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, and as C.S. Lewis said, "Your pride is the great sin." It is because it, it's the root cause of so many other sins. It is uh, in in our lives, and so you know, again, God will humble the proud. Yep. And when Satan was rebellious, right, yep. he was cast out of heaven. That's right. And when a king on earth is rebellious and proud and thinks, again, that, that, that he is the one to be glorified instead of God, God will, in his way, in his time, take him down. Right. Empires rise, right. but empires fall. fall. Yep. There's only one king in the end, and his name is Jesus. That's right. Well, one right, one king standing above all others, right? We That's look it. through history and see these powers rise and fall. And and one day, right, America, as powerful as she has been, right, will we'll fall. It's another yeah, it's ju- or another empire. If his people right. don't repent. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's another, it's another empire. And so, but against this, right, it's this backdrop mm-hmm. of a king backdrop of Jesus across all of history. It's just, mm-hmm. it's stunning. So yeah, so in the middle of all these prophecies, uh, a guy runs in and tells Ezekiel, you know, hey, it's it's over, like, right. you know, because he was in one of the first deportations, like, mm-hmm. Jerusalem really has fallen. Right. And so what's interesting is at that point, that low point of grief, all of a sudden we have another pivot to hope again. Right, right. Because get- God's letting him know, yeah, the judgment is complete. Jerusalem is destroyed. And so chapters 34 through 37 paint this picture of a hope for Israel. That's right. That's built around a good shepherd. Yep. Oh, we've heard that before. Gee. Chapter 34. But, but first, we also have an indictment against Israel, Israel's leaders for being poor shepherds. Right. So remember, Jesus is going to use a lot of this when he speaks to the Pharisees. Yep. So, you know, people who are like, we don't need the Old Testament. It is going to so deepen and enrich your study of the Gospels, of the New Testament letters, of the book of Revelation to have read all of this. You're going to see how Jesus pulls it forward in his ministry because he's going to quote these very passages from the prophet Ezekiel when he talks about when Israel's leaders are not shepherding the people well. Well, the New Testament's in a Jewish context. That's right. Right? These are predominantly Jews, predominantly with Jewish traditions. And where does all that come from? The Old Jewish Testament. Jewish scriptures. Yeah. Right? And so yeah. if you don't know the Old Testament, yeah. it's very difficult to understand. Yep. And we'll, we'll, I mean, I don't know if we're going to go through the intertestimonial period, but we'll go through some of that, I'm sure, of you know, how do these things transition? Yeah. And how do these things that we see in the New Testament, how does that build out of the Old Testament? Mm-hmm. And it's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. It's almost like there was a plan. Yeah, almost. Almost. It all right? ties together. <laughs> and, and that's my point here is because another thing that's woven in here is the promise of a new David, a new king. Yep. So that's Israel's hope is, is built on that promise. And then beautiful, a new New heart. Yeah. I love this passage. I'm yeah. going to remove their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Praise God. Right? A heart that beats, a heart that feels, a heart that longs for God. Yep. You know, and then verse 37, and we're going to preach this one, so I don't want to go into yeah. it too much, but it's every preacher's favorite, right? It's the Valley of Dry Bones. Yep. That God is going to give a new life through the power of his spirit. Yep. That God can take things that are dead. Yep. Because these bones are 
dry. Right. Right? They are dry. They are as dead as dead can be. Yep. And only the Spirit of God can bring them back to life. So, you know, it, yeah, and the old joke for a preacher is, is right, you get up there in the pulpit, and it's not much more than a valley of dry bones out there, right? You're, and so when God tells Ezekiel, go preach to this valley yeah. of, of dead people, you know, that's literally a picture of what you're doing as a communicator of God's word every yeah. week. Wow. Because if we are not in Christ Jesus, we're spiritually dead. Right. We may be yeah. walking around, right. right? We may have the appearance of life. But if you ha- don't have a redeemed new heart, a heart of flesh, right, then you are dead. Right. And yet we're called to preach to dead things. Right. Why? Because God can bring them back to life. That's exactly right. Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people live. Come on. And we forget that. Now you're preaching we, to the preacher. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you, love, you love to... Uh, anyway. Uh, but yeah, but, right? But that's, that's... We keep yeah. thinking it's about being good. Yeah. And it's not. It's about being alive. Yeah. And, yeah. and we miss that because these yeah. are dead people. We talked earlier, right, about the lost people acting lost. They're dead. Mm-hmm. They don't know anything but death. What, what do you expect them to yeah. do, yeah. right? Because life only comes from yeah. Jesus. Life but, only but comes from But the word Christ. of God, the, the breath of, of life. life. So you see a recreation takes yep. us all the way back yep. to Genesis. Yep. You know, that God breathes life into dead people yeah. and they are resurrected. Praise and God. Ezekiel gets a picture of that. That's I mean, awesome. man, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps yeah, here. So I can't, I can't wait to get yeah. to this Sunday already. <laughs> Uh, and so, and then, and then we see the restoration, and yeah. you have this beautiful, long nine chapter section uh, of of the presence of the Lord and, and the hope for all creation. Absolutely, not only is mankind going to be redeemed, right, but but creation itself. And sometimes we we overlook that, we forget that part. The yeah, creation groans, Paul tells us, right, for mm-hmm. the for the day. And I love we see that God is holy and gracious, yeah, and holy and gracious, like you say, not just to us, but to everything, right, mm-hmm. to the cosmos, to to uh, everything that is. Yeah. is going to be redeemed. Yeah, and so now you get this uh, temple vision that was in chapters 8 or 11. Well, now it's like double-clicked, and it's like on steroids. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and, and, and specs, right? I mean, yeah. literal specs of the temple. This wide, this long, this high. Mm-hmm. It's it's unreal. And yeah. and I realize that can get deep. Yeah. But when you think about the magnificence of that and what it takes in that day to do that, yeah. just stun, literally stunning. Yeah, and then I love that from the, the throne flows this, this little trickle that becomes this mighty right. river, yeah. and you see a new garden planted. Again, yep. the, the the cosmic reality of what God's doing, and of yep. course that gets pulled forward into Revelation with the, the river of life. Yep. But the, 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 I love this, Brian. The name of the city is what? He doesn't name it Jerusalem. Right. The name of the city is the Lord is there. Right. Because that's what matters. Right. To be in his presence, to know that he's there. Well, and that's what matters, period. Mm-hmm. Right? I can go anywhere if the Lord is with me. Yep. Right. Don't send me anywhere that you are not coming with me. And the Lord's omnipresent. And so Ezekiel's learning. Right. I'm sitting down, depressed by a canal in Babylon, and lo and behold, God gives me a vision. He's bigger than all of this. He's here too. Yeah. So it teaches us as people in exile, wherever we find ourselves, God is bigger. God is there. Absolutely. And our problem becomes when we try to, to make much of us, right? And we have yep. a little God. Right. God say, no, 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 right? Ezekiel, let's, let's be sure we've got this right, right? Yep. I'm a great big God. Yep. Right. And, and you're my servant. Yep. I'm going to call you. I have a plan and a purpose for you, yep. right? But, but I'm the great big God right. who I was, I was in Jerusalem, yep. but I'm also in Babylon. Yep. I, again, where, wherever, wherever I go as a Christian, right, the Holy Spirit is in me. The Lord is with me. Yeah. Anywhere we go. That's it. So a couple of things we learned from Ezekiel. You you love this idea, right? That God puts watchmen in our midst. That's, that's the, that's kind of the calling that the Lord put on me when I became a Christian was, was Ezekiel three and 33 that, that, you know, when I say something, you say something or their blood is on your hands. And so this has kind of been my calling. Um, and it's very uncomfortable, to be really, really honest. And I think yeah, you've seen that in me over the, over the, over the sure, decades sure. that we've been together. But, but and, and just to, to be super clear, right, the calling for us as watchmen in this area is people who know the word. Right. And then are constantly saying, "Hey, are, are are we living this out? Right? Are we are we following this? Right? right? This isn't just Brian's opinion or no, Jay's no. opinion or anybody's you know uh, self appointed opinion. This is, hey, what does the word say? Right? And is what we're doing in our lives and our homes and our yep. communities and our churches is it lining up with the word? That's exactly that's what right. a watchman does. That's exactly right. And it's Christ is the standard. He reveals it through His word, and so His word is how we take things out and out into our practices, particularly yeah. in church practices as individuals, mm-hmm. and go, is this what the Lord is? 
calling us to do. Yeah. This is what the, what the Lord is telling us to do. And like, it's exactly right. And, and ask and say, mm-hmm. right? And that that's kind of yeah. The, the and role. that's the link. You know, the New Testament speaks about that there is a spiritual gift of prophecy, right? Which isn't so much future telling right. as it is forth telling. Right. It's saying, hey guys, we have God's word, right? And, and 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 hey, the closer we walk to God's word, the more obedient we are to it. The healthier our, our homes are going to be. The healthier our churches are going to be. The more flourishing our community is going to be. Yep. So let's get ourselves into line with God's right. word. Right. And sometimes the sometimes deviations are unintentional. We don't even notice the drift. Yeah, but that's drift why is a good these, word that's for why it. these yeah. these people call yeah, us. Yeah, I forget which author, but somebody said nobody drifts into holiness. Right. <laughs> so you drift out right? of holiness. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Your natural your natural inclination is yeah. not to prone to wander, God. Lord, I feel it. Right. <laughs> Amen. As the hymn says. In way too in way too many ways. Yeah. yeah. So as, watchmen help us. And Ezekiel yep. was was during this difficult time, right? He served as that for, for Israel. Yep. Uh, and judge God, God's judgment again comes to all, as yep. we've talked about. And we you know, we already kind of hit on this one, but the idea that, you know, God's people are not spared. Right. Right? Exactly it's not right. like, oh, I'm going to treat you differently than I treat everybody else. No, God's going to make sure his people, of all people, right. because they have the word. Exactly. They have the revelation. Exactly. They know what, they should know what right and wrong is. Right. And so they are held to that standard. Right. You know, but, but he's also not going to let the other uh, nations, he's not going to let the other people groups, you know, off off the hook either. No, because he's revealed himself to everybody. Right? That's right. We, we, we know from the nature of yeah, God. Yeah. What, what Romans he, what chapter one. Right. I mean, so he's revealed himself to everybody. So this is not an, a you know, capricious judgment. This is after repeated attempts to go, yeah. you are going the wrong way. Come mm-hmm. to me, right? All yeah. you who labor. And in our rest. era, that's why we send missionaries among the nations Absolutely. to let all peoples know, right? That there is a God that we're accountable to and a God, but a God who loves you enough that sent me to tell you there's a way to life. Well, that's why I go to work. Mm-hmm. Which is no different than going to a foreign country, right? Wherever it's, God's called, wherever you. God's called us mm-hmm. is where we're missionaries. So you're a missionary on your ball team. Mm-hmm. You're a missionary at your at your job. You're a missionary yep. in your club. You're a missionary, That's right. and so it's not just for missions. Yeah, and let's remember too, we right? Because we're talking about the nations. God is continues to bring the nations to us. Yeah. Oh yes, you know, and our people, our our people groups near us, you know, continue to to evolve and change, even in a place like Middle Tennessee. When they send missionaries to us, by the yeah, way, yeah, that's right. We don't just send missionaries to them. They they see how lost we are. Mm-hmm. And send missionaries to Franklin, and I've met missionaries yeah. from Africa that are here to to share the gospel in Franklin and Brentwood. Yeah, and it's it's kind of a right, kind of a stunning. I guess, yeah. and that goes a little back bit to of pride, a stinging right, indictment of of Lord. Am I sure I'm doing what I'm supposed? To, if if you're sending mm-hmm. a missionary here, are you sure I'm doing yeah. what I'm supposed to be doing? Yeah. And so it, it causes us to go go to the Lord in humble repentance yeah. and go, Lord, you know, and maybe this is your design and plan, but, you know, is there something we should be doing? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, be, it's but yeah. it's beautiful to see that whole thing, yeah. right, that they see us and love Middle Tennessee enough mm-hmm. to move across the world to come here to bring the gospel. Yep. God is so gracious. Yeah, we Sorry. have to be faithful to our calling. No, it's yeah. good. And then ultimately, again, Ezekiel ends on a note of hope. Yeah. And so, you know, he, even though he's called to preach a hard message, even though he's called to do some crazy <laughs> sign acts and street theater, uh, even though, you know, he he has to deliver some incredibly heavy news, at the same time, God keeps dripping into his life the, these messages, these visions of hope for the future. Yep. And and that's what, that's what staying in the Word does. Mm-hmm. That's what staying in your biblical community does. Does. Yeah, that's what taking care of each other does. It reminds us of who God is. Well, it helps, helps you to live life between the poles, right? You know, yep. the fact that we're in a very broken world, yep. you know, but at the same time, God is still in control. Yep. And so you you have to live, you have to calibrate. And so why scripture helps you to be able to do that. Yep. Because again, if you pluck a verse here out of two out of Ezekiel, you might find yourself in a deep depression, right? right? <laughs> you pluck this verse or that verse, you're like, oh, everything's going to turn out well in the end. Right. You know, the, the Bible enables us to, to live reality for what it is. Yep. And yet, face it with the promises and the hope of the gospel. That's exactly right, amen. and I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that with an amen. That's, All right, that's, that's what we do. That's All right, well, do. Zeke. So there's a lot there to work through. Again, we can't feed you in 30 minutes a week, but we hope to make you more hungry. Uh, And hopefully uh, some of this walk through the prophet Ezekiel has helped you out today. Uh, And so that's it for today's episode of the Sermon Notes podcast. We hope you found this discussion helpful. And if you did, help us out by leaving a review in your podcast app or dropping a comment in the YouTube comments below. As always, we thank you for listening and watching, and we can't wait until we see you again next week.